Hi, I'm Danielle Barron, and I write the Hollywood Jew blog at jewishjournal.com. A recent blog post I did on the film Miral received a lot of comments, so I thought I would address some of them on video. First one is from Norm Galston, who writes, Personally, I think we have enough problems with half the world constantly trying to destroy us Jews, Israel. We don't need Jewish directors, producers, actors, etc. trying to prove how, quote, even-handed thinking they are by joining the mob. Mr. Galston, this is a movie from the perspective of a Palestinian woman. It is her life. It is not a history of the Arab-Israeli conflict. And by the way, I think the film's lack of nuance and context and its general inability to humanize Israelis is one of its major weaknesses. But if you want to see a story from the perspective of an individual Palestinian civilian, see Miral. And by the way, half the world is trying to destroy us? Really? Let's see. Next, we have from Jeffrey Ellis, who writes, Miral has been pretty heavily panned as a film by about 75% of reviewers for its turgid and badly written dialogue, poor acting, and weak directing. What did I think of it as a movie? Okay, first of all, the directing is actually the saving grace of this film. Julian Schnabel is an incredibly gifted, talented artist, so he was able to make a film that I think Really, this, the weakness of the film is that you have a first-time screenwriter responsible for telling a, a very loaded story and a story that spans many, many years. So that accounts for problem number one. But directing-wise, I actually think the film was quite beautiful and artistic. And um, as far as the acting goes, I mean, Frida Pinto is lovely to look at, but um, she could take a few acting classes before the next big role. Barry writes, the larger story, however, is that while her story may or may not contain elements of truth, the Palestinian narrative is never accurate and serves more as propaganda than reality. Putting that propaganda on the big screen is a dismal thing for someone to do who supposedly believes in the truth. At such a sensitive time in Israel's history, when the world is merging anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, do we need a movie that takes such a biased view against Israel? The simple answer is yes, we do, because it is our responsibility as Jews and as potential partners with the Palestinian people to eventually resolve the crisis and have a peace uh, process. We have to know their side, we have to understand their perspective, and the only way to really humanize people that we often tend to demonize is to see some of these more nuanced, human, intimate, personal stories that uh, create a possibility for empathy. So yes. David Guy writes, could anyone imagine the tables being turned and a one-sided pro-Israel film being screened for the UN General Assembly? I can't. The Arab Muslim bloc of 56 countries would all vote against showing it. Isn't it just overtly political anti-Israeli act to screen this movie at the UN? Here, I'm going to agree with you on some level. I do think that when you screen a film at the UN, it automatically gets politicized, and that is happening here. And one of the major complaints when I interviewed people for my cover story that will come out later this week is that if they're going to screen a film that is from one perspective at a place that is that purports to represent all countries equally, they also need to screen a film from the Israeli side that represents the Israeli perspective or the Jewish perspective or whatever. So on that point, I'm going to agree with you. I think that it was a very fraught uh, environment to screen this film at, and I think that it would behoove the UN to also represent the Israeli side, but um, I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. Um, what else? Finally. Rabbi Erwin Kula writes, Israel has become a third rail in American Jewish life such that the very telling of a story that evokes empathy about a Palestinian becomes anti-Israel and one-sided. 
the fact that the lead Palestinian characters are all serious advocates of nonviolence, the fact that another central character, a Palestinian activist, changes his political position from terrorist to nonviolence at the cost of his life, the fact that the movie is fundamentally hopeful is all trumped by one house demolition, one scene of Israeli security beating someone accused of terrorism, and a couple of checkpoint scenes. And the film, again, a true story of a young woman's growing up, becomes an act of self-hate, betrayal, and anti-Israel. Easier to attack Julian Schnabel and his film than to deal with where we may be wrong. I urge people to go see Miral and decide for themselves if this film made by a proud Jew, is anti-Israel or an invitation to simply feel empathy for another human being. Rabbi, I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for watching. I'm Danielle Barron at Hollywood Jew and JewishJournal.com, and keep those comments coming.